Hamlin's Towns in Brunswick, by famous Hanover City, the river Weser, deep and wide, washes its wall on the southern side. A pleasanter spot you never spied. But when begins my ditty almost five hundred years ago to see the townsfolk suffer so from vermin was a pity. Rats, they fought the dogs and killed the cats and bit the babies in the cradles and ate the cheeses out of the vats and licked the soup from the cook's own ladles, split upon the kegs of salted splats, made nests inside men's Sunday hats and even spoiled the women's chats by drowning their speaking with shrieking and squeaking in fifty different sharps and flats. At last the people in a body to the town hall came flocking. "'Tis clear,' cried they, "'our mayors are noddy, and as for our corporation, shocking, "'to think we buy gowns lined with ermine for adults "'that can't or won't determine what's best to rid us of our vermin. "'You hope, because you're old and a beast, "'to find in the fairy civic road ease. "'Rouse up, sirs, give your brains a racking "'to find the remedy we're lacking, "'or sure as fate we'll send you packing.' At this the mayor and corporation quaked with a mighty consternation. An hour they sat in council. At length the mayor broke silence. For a gilder I'd my ermine gown sell. I wish I were a mile hence. It's easy to bid one rack one's brain. I'm sure my poor head aches again. I've scratched it so and all in vain. Oh, for a trap, a trap, a trap! Just as he said this, what should hap? At the chamber door but a gentle tap. Bless us, cried the mayor. What's that? With the corporation, as he sat, looking little through wondrous fat, not brighter was his eye, nor moister than a too long opened oyster, save when at noon his paunch grew mutinous for a plate of turtle green and glutinous, only a scraping of shoes on the mat. Anything like the sound of a rat makes my heart go pit-a-pat. Come in, the mayor cried, looking bigger, and in they come the strangest figure. His queer long coat from heel to head was half of yellow and half of red, and he himself was tall and thin, with sharp blue eyes, each like a pin, and light loose hair, yet swarthy skin, no tuft on cheek nor beard on chin, but lips where smiles went out and in. There was no guessing his kith and kin, and nobody could enough admire the tall man in his quaint attire. Quoth one, It's as my great-grandsire, starting up at the trump of doom's tone, had walked this way from his painted tombstone. He advanced to the council table, and, Please, your honours, said he, I am able, by means of a secret charm, to draw all creatures living beneath the sun that creep or swim or fly or run after me, so as you never saw, and I chiefly use my charm on creatures that do people harm, the mole and toad and newton viper, and people call me the Pied Piper. And here they noticed around his neck a scarf of red and yellow stripe to match with his coat of the self-same check, and at the scarf's end hung a pipe, and his fingers, they noticed, were ever straying, as if impatient to be playing upon the pipe, as though it dangled over his vesture, so old-fangled. Yet, said he, poor piper, as I am, in Tartary I freed the champ. Last June from his huge swarms of gnats I eased in Asia the Nissan, of a monstrous brood of vampire bats. And as for what your brain bewilders, if I can rid your town of rats, will you give me a thousand guilders? One? Fifty thousand was the exclamation of the astonished mayor and corporation. Okay, that's enough for the moment. (laughs) Bye!